Let's see together how to manage users in Kali Linux using the terminal window. The first thing to do is to add a new user using the user add command. I will use the tag m to create a home directory for the user Gus. Next, I will add the tag capital G to include this user in the supplemental sudo group. Take note that in Linux, we have two types of groups. The primary group using the tag lowercase g and the supplemental group, which is an additional group that you can add to your primary group. In this comment, I did not specify a primary group. So, by default, the primary group will be the same as the name of the user, which is Gus. I will talk more about groups in the next video lesson. For now, let's try to understand the big picture. Next, I will add the tag S, which stands for shell, and I will assign the bash shell to this user. Why? So he can use the bash terminal window. Now that we have a new user, we still need to set a password for Gus using the passwd command. Before I continue further, there is an important information that you need to know about this comment. I've been using the root user, right? But the first time you want to use this powerful user, you must create a password. Why? Because Kali Linux needs to know the password that you want to use for the root user. In other words, you must execute the passwd command for the root user after the first time you log in into your Kali host. All right, now let's switch to the new user that we just created. After that, I will change to the home directory of Gus. And using the pwd command, we can see that we are in the slash home slash gas folder. At this stage, I will clear the screen using the control L keyboard shortcut. Now, if I list the contents of gas home directory, I can see there is nothing created and it's still empty. Next, I will list the capabilities of this user pseudo permissions. The most important part of this output is that Gus can execute any binary on this host with the sudo keyword. This is very useful for escalating privileges on a Linux environment. If you ever find a user like this, then it means you can execute root commands with the sudo keyword. Keep that in mind for your next privilege escalation challenge. Now to show the user information quickly, we can use the ID command. So the user is Gus, and we can see the user ID as well. Next is the primary group name, which is Gus as well. After that is the supplemental groups. And we can see that Gus is a member of the pseudo group as well. Another simple way to know about the current user on a Linux host is typing the who am I command. As you can see, the output is much simpler. Now, if you want to know the currently logged users, I will use the w command for this purpose. Let me explain the output information because there is a lot to grasp here. The first value shows the system current time. Second, it shows for how long this host is up and running. The third value shows how many users are logged in. 
After that, we see the average system load, which is the average number of jobs running on Kali. On the next line, we see the user that I used to log in with. After that, it shows that I logged in using the TTY terminal window. If I would have accessed this host remotely using SSH, for example, then it will show a PTS and not TTY. The next value shows that I'm logged in locally. And if I was connected remotely, then it will show my remote IP address. After that, it shows at what time the root user logged in to this host. Next, the idle value shows the time since the root user last used the terminal window. The JCPU value is the total runtime of all processes for this user, and the PCPU is the elapsed time of the current process, which is showing in the what field. If you feel that this is too much, then there is another simplified version of the W command, which is the who command. A very helpful comment for investigation is the last comment, which will list the last logged in users into Kali system. Let's analyze this output. Here you can see first on the top, the root user. Eventually, this is the last user that logged in into the system. Next, we can see that the root user is using the TTY terminal window. After that, the number zero means that I'm connected locally to the host. Then it shows when I logged in. And finally, we can see that I'm still using the system and did not log out yet. Whereas we can see the previous users for how long they stayed and used the Kali system. Finally, let me show you how to delete the user using the user del command. After executing it, you can see that I don't have the permission to do so. Why? Because I need to add the sudo keyword to get the job done. Here you go. Now I was able to delete the user test. He's no more in the system. Folks, Follow me to the next video lesson to learn how to manage groups in Kali Linux.